You all ready? <coughs> So, our group decided to study transhumanism, and transhumanism is an international scientific and technological movement that aims to supersede the physical capabilities of the human body. It has been reshaped by technology, from the way we get around, the way we seek information, and the way we communicate. It's easy to think that if only our technology advances enough, we'll finally be satisfied. The fact is, as thinking human beings, we care about far more than that. <coughs> Consciousness means that we have the capacity to experience the world, to reflect upon, and most importantly, to shape it. And so, what begins as humanism, our most sympathetic understanding and treatment of human nature, becomes transhumanism the drive to fundamentally revolutionize what it means to be human by way of technological advancement. Changing human nature might be the most dangerous idea in all of human history, or perhaps the most liberating. Generally speaking, transhumanist thought does it considers current trends to see how future technologies will develop and how they might affect us. Second, it calls for the use of current and upcoming technology to bring about beneficial societal change. Okay, so the opposing view to our topic of transhumanism is by a, a, bio, a lecturer in bioethics, Andy Mia, who works at the University of Paisley, who says, it is more likely that the integration of new technologies will operate within a shifting framework of what is normal, positing with his thesis that Transhumanism will change what it means to be normal and to be human. <clears throat> okay, so transhumanism is in a way already being practiced with enhancement drugs and technologies. And the world we live in now is always advancing, and that's what will make transhumanism normal for us. It also aids in promoting other scientific and technological advancements, products, and procedures. The first example is U.S. super soldiers. Michael Snyder, a graduate of the McIntyre School of Commerce at the University of Virginia, states that tomorrow soldiers could be able to run at Olympic speeds and could go days without food or sleep. This is obtained by genetically modifying the human body with gene manipulation. The second example is longevity with pills, treatments, and procedures. Experiments conducted by Cynthia Kenyon, a graduated valedictorian in chemistry and biochemistry at the University of Georgia, uh, her tests proved that a single gene mutation could drastically affect the lifespan of an animal. Her test resulted in countless worms living up to twice their normal lifespan. And she is now working on a longevity pill, which is just a grasp at immortality. The last example is myoelectric limbs. Myoelectric limbs are further advanced, uh, further advanced uh, replacement limbs that use electrical signals that attach to your nervous system, which allow the limb to move more like a human limb and allow the person using it to, in a sense, feel what they're touching. Aaron Biba, a Wired Magazine correspondent and correspondent for MythbustersTested.com, is suggesting that humans should start replacing their healthy limbs with stuff like this to further advance themselves. Hmm. Now for the social perspective of transhumanism. Although individuals such as me, as mentioned in our posting view, might agree with the fact that through the increase of social competitions, uh, many individuals would want to alter themselves in order to benefit their position in society. Um, it's actually, they don't take into consideration the fact that many other individuals also want to benefit their position, but because they want to be able to live their life normally again. Uh, for example, Nicholas Carr, an award-winning technology and culture American author, says that transhumanism and technology isn't what makes us transhuman or posthuman, but it's actually what makes us human. And he would agree with the fact that transhumanism has allowed us to reach places that have never been able to reach by mankind before. Examples would be um, the super soldiers, the uh, ability to increase our lifespan, and even the prosthetics that Amaya talked about. This is why it is imperative that we continue to take care of how we uh, integrate the technology in our lives today. And like I said earlier, um, although many people do believe that the, social, the, the increase of social competitions uh, might uh, create a new social class that is un unneeded. Um, it's actually true that transhumanism has allowed individuals to be treated equally and become more accepted in society. Another thing is a uh, British physicist and educator, Freeman Dyson, says that all these alterations uh, will come one way or another. Therefore, we can say that uh, transhumanism has positively benefited the American society and will continue doing so. 
So a philosophical definition of transhumanism is actually a class of philosophies that is looking towards the acceleration and continuation of intelligent life, which is sourced from Humanity Plus, an organization that sees transhumanism as the future and was founded by no transhumanist Nick Foster. So philosophy on a broader term is characterized by three aspects of humanity, which is knowledge, existence, and reality. Transhumanism in these terms uh, is increased ability to, to learn more, which is knowledge, prolonged existence, which falls under existence, and different areas of consciousness, which falls under reality. Although we currently use 100% of our brains, our analytical and practical skills are minimal to what they could be with technological advances. Through transhumanist technology, such as the longevity field that Amaya mentioned in her scientific lens, we can prolong our existence of an average 82 years, which was sourced from disabledwar.com, to a 100 and over years in the future. To access those different areas of consciousness, we can, for example, connect our brains to computers to further communicate and enhance those practical and analytical skills, which Tiffany and Gregor were in their social lives. Along with the different philosophies, many people debate about the, the ethics in transhumanism. Some people mention how it will make us less human and that it is unnatural. Transhumanism helps a lot of different people, including those born with disabilities or those who lost limbs in war. Um, they do so with cochlear, limb, eye, and even brain implants. The different levels that Gabriel was talking about with consciousness is mentioned in Mind Uploading, which is one of the most controversial technologies because people think it will be harmful and it will make us less human. But when different technologies such as nanotechnology, it will make it, it will be completely harmless. Jason So said the creator of Immersive Labs mentioned in his TED Talks that transhumanism is simply an extension of results with technology. People use their phones and computers every day to upload data that they think of. Also, mankind has been unnaturally altering themselves with drugs and vaccines, so it doesn't really matter whether transhumanism is unnatural or not, but we should accept transhumanism. Okay, so on to the future. I have an infographic that was sourced from the biomed department at Brown University, and it is a of course, it's an infographic of a myoelectric limb, like Amaya talked about, that's currently in development. That, as she said, allows us to, allows people to, with the implant, move with the fluidity of a natural human limb, and also to be able to feel what touches it through a system of electronic impulses that go through the vein, go through the leg, and connect to the nervous system. Also, I would like to point out that Nicholas Negropont, the head of the MIT Media Lab and current researcher at MIT, has posited that in the next 30 years that we will be able to ingest information through our bloodstream and our brain in the form of a pill that will use nanotechnology to attach to our neuroreceptors to learn things such as literacy and language and science and mathematics at a much quicker rate. And so the future has many developments and it's going to be a time of acceleration for the human race. In conclusion, we have decided that, as an answer to our question, that transhumanism will ultimately benefit the 21st century American society in ways that we thought unimaginable. And also, it is ethical because we practice it in lesser forms today through the use of vaccines, smartphones, and other technological integrations with our biological interfaces. And also, after some time, we believe that the transhumanism movement will become uh, obsolete because with the rapid adaptation of transhumanist technologies, what we call today transhuman, they will call human in the future. Thank you.